My name is Claudia Stover. Um, our property is at 7,800 feet. It's um, in the Colorado Rockies. It's been a kind of a dismally winter for us, unusual for Colorado, not a lot of sun this year. And yet, thank goodness for the dome because it's been a kind of dreary. People are pretty much done on February 6th as it is. They're pretty much done with this winter. Some of the snow you see right here has been here since October. So that's a little disturbing for us, but the one thing that really sort of brings up our spirits is being able to walk into the dome and see things growing all winter. Want to come with me? So this is the 22 foot dome. Um, as you probably already know, in the wintertime, most of our crops are short. Um, I do not apply any heat to my winter crops. I like to see what my dome can do. And I've done that always. And I really appreciate that the dome's smart enough to be able to get through those brutal winter nights. Winter plant-wise, we want to make sure that um, if you're trying to work with what actually grows without any problem, then stick to your, any kind of lettuces that actually have a winter name in them. <laughs> That's a tip or a Siberian name or a Russian name. Those are tips. <laughs> Those can make it through really cold weather. And so um, I've, I have several, probably six kinds of lettuces. And of course, chard goes through winter beautifully it goes through summer beautifully but i usually kick it out of the dome because i need more space for other summer crops um also your herbs a lot of your herbs almost all your herbs uh, love to be cold in the winter so i have savory in here sage i have two kinds of chives uh, garlic chive and regular chives i've got i mentioned the santolina i've got um, fennel, I have episote, uh, which is a Mexican herb that's used in beans. I have two kinds, three kinds of parsley. Um, what else do I have in here? I have, oh, I have some mints as well. You just have to keep them kind of encased in, in a particular area so they don't take over. So it's, uh, like I said, it's um, I'm a big person for cutting things back in the spring. Um, pruning is always a good idea and of course harvesting to eat. And so a lot of my lettuces I've actually removed over the winter. They're done. Um, but I'm, I still have some that I've kept. And so um, what you see is a portion of what I've had over the winter because of course you're eating the whole time too. And so really during your time period from um, December 1st to January 15th, I call that the dark days. <laughs> there, and it's really very slow to no growing. So you wanna make sure that your winter crops are actually um, mature enough by December 1st that they can feed you over the winter. So you might wonder why I don't have supplemental heat. Um, it's true, I could, still have tomatoes hanging if I chose to. I always take those down in uh, late November or the first of December. That's what I call tomato down day. And I take all my tomatoes out. So, um, but the reason I do that is twofold. I, I want the sun in the dome. So I don't want things overhead blocking the sun to get to the tank, to keep the tank warm. But the other reason, another reason that I do not put heat in the dome is because, um, really twofold, um, I like to see what the dome can do. And I started that process 14 years ago, and I've always been amazed. The dome has the capacity, it's smart enough to really work for you. And so uh, when you add heat, um, sometimes you can get an advancement on your um, production in the dome. It'll seem like things are coming to fruition earlier, but a lot of times you get a lot of bugs. I'm not, I really don't like fighting bugs. I'm, I'm totally, like most dome owners, I'm totally all organic 
and but everything's healthy and well and a lot of times when I've gone to take care of other people's domes that have had a lot of heat they also have a lot of mealy bugs and other pest pressure so um, I'm not completely without any pests but um, I like to see what the dome can do and I found that the dome is a lot smarter than I think it is. So. So let's go over to the 18 foot dome. <laughs> oh, frozen. It's a little frozen from uh, so much cold temperatures. So you can see in here, I have different things going on. Um, again, I got chives coming up. This is whorehound, like what people use for cough drops, and it'll get it to be a huge plant. And actually I have um, some cannas coming up here. They'll end up being this tall with big giant um, flower heads. I've got um, bok choy here. Uh, this is a um, Avon spinach. I've got three kinds of collards in the back here. And I have some purple, um, it's actually called red boar kale. Let me get out of your way here. And um, there's, there. this is sorrel again. I have French sorrel in both domes. That's uh, the French use it for soup. And it goes through all kinds of rough weather and it's very lemony. So it's wonderful to taste uh, in your salads. And next to it is um, Astro arugula, which is a really nice arugula as well. I like that a lot. And you can see I have lots and lots of rosemary. If you come on around here, you'll notice that one of the great features of rosemary is that in the winter time, which most people never get to see, it has this beautiful, beautiful bloom on it. And it, but it needs cold weather to really produce that bloom. Now that is completely edible and it adds such, not just beauty to your salad, but a really nice uh, rosemary flavor. So it's lovely. I actually bring it to a local restaurant for them to garnish plates because I just want people to see it. So, so you can see this tank is, uh, appears to be a taller tank, but it's not. The other one was sunk in the ground. This one is above ground. And this dome is an 18 foot dome. So they're really quite different in their proportions inside. Uh, one of the things I feel very strong about is I think every dome needs to have a place to sit and enjoy. So you, sometimes people think, oh, all I want to do is grow food and we all want to do that, but having a place to sit and enjoy your dome is really important. So even in this smaller dome, I have a place for two chairs and a table. And um, I've always been grateful for that because now you can imagine uh, this dome is going to be filled with grapes all the way over grape clusters and you can sit underneath it and enjoy a cup of tea with someone. It's really a lovely place to hang out.